from Dimitri Martin. It's oh. <laughs>
squares too. I'm not gonna say something like that on the CD. That's stupid. I'm not gonna mention artists. What the fuck was that, man? <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here. All right, cool. So I'm gonna start timing this. I don't even know what do I do, man. I'm gonna... Go. Thanks. That was helpful. <laughs> Shit, he started, he's just going. So, actually, I want to bring my friend Leo up, back up on stage. We're, we're good friends from New York, and we, we kept, well, he started, we started around the same time, do like open mics and all that kind of stuff. And so he helped me out. We went to Austin last night, and I did a show down there. It was cool. It was pretty good. I mean, not like this. I mean, this is, I mean, they had a mural in Seattle, too, but it seemed inappropriate, though. So Leo, could you introduce me on that microphone? Um, yeah, you sure you don't want me to use the 1950s? Oh, maybe that one would be good. That one's got a space processor on it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for any robots in the room that would find me funny. <laughs> beep, beep, oh, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> beep. Can I get another liquor? Can I get some more oil, gin and oil? Do it. Does everything sound good? Should I stand closer or further from the mic? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> closer or further? Yes. Wow. Did you get kicked in the balls, Stuart? You sound like a girl. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't go well for my recording. I'm getting ball kicks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ow. This before the show track will be great. <laughs> <laughs> this before the show and after the career. <laughs> Okay, so let's say something, you say something like, uh, I'm going to keep it simple, I don't want to raise expectations too high, so how about just, uh, please welcome to the stage, um, this guy's a good comedian in person. <laughs> just, just don't say very good, Rex, just good comedian in person. Okay, let's get a good comedian person. Good comedian and person. Yeah. <laughs> Dimitri Mark. Okay. Thanks. By the way, thanks in advance. I know. Uh, it's really good that we didn't work this out before, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks, man. By the way. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to... Okay. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if I go off stage or not. I probably will. So I'm going off stage. Okay. <laughs> I hope no one applauds or cheers so much. <laughs> okay, you ready? I feel like I'm party to something evil. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage a good comedian and person, Dimitri Martin! Thank you. Thank you, audience. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be here to record my CD. I never did a CD before. This is my first CD. And CD here means really? compact disc. This is, this disc is compact. This one is not enlarged. This one is really portable. My first little disc. And awesome jokes! Thank you, voice in my head. <laughs> That is the best beginning to a CD ever. <laughs> this comedian can throw his voice into the audience back at himself. It's a self-hating ventriloquist. <laughs> so I'm from New York, so I figured I should do my CD in Seattle. <laughs> because... I was looking for a name of a place that would be appropriate for the kind of thing that I want to get going. Giggles. Giggles. Like, Giggles. Hold on. Giggles. That might be right. I could go to Gaffaz or something like that. That says the bar way too high. And there's a place in New York called Shrugs, but that's not good. Giggles just right. Right in the middle. I was a comedian. I was mildly amused. <laughs> you must have been at Giggles. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of giggling going on. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm having a good year. I wanted to record a CD this year. I 
think I have enough jokes now, and it, the year is going well. I set a personal record on Christmas. Um, I got my shopping done three weeks ahead of time, which I, I never did before, so that's cool. And I have the presents back in my apartment. I was halfway through wrapping them, and I realized, damn, I used the wrong wrapping paper. The paper I used said, happy birthday. I didn't want to waste it, so I just wrote Jesus on it. No, no, that, that's actually for you. You can open it. I don't, I don't think he's going to show up. Don't worry about it. I'm doing other stuff. So I'm, I'm making this CD, and I'm also working on a book right now. I'm going to have my first book. And I'm excited because some authors write in first person, and others write in third person. But I'm writing my book in fifth person. So every sentence starts with, I heard from this guy who told somebody. <laughs> it's a really long book. I mean, it's uh, very gossipy, you know what I mean? Kind of a roundabout story. I'm excited. It's about a high school marching band that stays together after they graduate. <laughs> they don't break up. It's so like, you know what? We got chemistry. We know the songs. <laughs> Screw it, let's just do it, come on. And they tour the country, they tour the country. They're so hardcore, they don't have a bus, they march everywhere. The working title is, Never Get Laid. I think writing, writing is an impressive career. That's, that's an impressive one because it's difficult. You know, the most impressive writers are people who write for emergency situations. Like the guy who writes the stuff on the back of a fire extinguisher. Wow. When your audience is people who are on fire. You gotta be good with adjectives, you know what I mean? Crispy, shit, let's get out of here. Hey, Leo, my, my friend Leo's here. Leo, could you come on stage uh, for a second? Thanks. I should have invited him up earlier, and so the walking part would have, you know what I mean? But I could even edit this out, like, the power of editing, I could take out this moment right now. <laughs> but I didn't, left it in. Ah. Or did I? <laughs> so thanks, so, because I'm doing a CD, um, I'm a very physical, visual, comedian, you know, because I move around, I have a body and all that kind of stuff, so <laughs> somebody who's listening who's not in the room right now, they don't know the, the full experience, they don't know what's going on, so just for some of it, maybe I thought my friend Leo, who's also a professional comedian, could commentate and say what it is I've done when it's appropriate, you know what I mean, so, so that the joke would actually have its full thrust, so I'll, I'll do one of those and we'll see if it works out, okay, so, um, and I'll do something true, because, you know, let's be real. Okay. So I, I got a haircut for the CD. <laughs> because the technology, you know, you can hear swooshing, you know, different lengths and stuff. You don't know what's going on. So I got a haircut, and I remember saying, "Can I get a trim?" But it must have come out, "Gay Beetle, please." <laughs> Shape, but it's too long, you know what I'm saying? To me, he looks like a gay beetle. <laughs> Thanks. Mostly George. <laughs> Thanks, man. See, that's, that works. So we'll see if that works at different points in the city. Uh, I think the worst time to have a heart attack is during a game of charades. <laughs> Especially if your teammates are bad guessers. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance? What are you doing? What's the fat guy? Fat guy on the floor. All right. Uh, sleeping fat guy. What the hell? This guy sucks, man. I was riding on the train and I heard this guy say to his friend, Man, I'm really good at checkers. Which is the same as saying, Man, I'm not good at a lot of things. 
including picking bragging topics in public. <laughs> Kick me, dog. <laughs> Checkers is weird. That messes up your idea of what a king looks like, you know what I mean? It's like a king, yeah. Look for a guy with a guy exactly like him on top of him. Isn't that more of a queen? <laughs> That's the first cracker joke on my CD. Sorry. I don't care. A drunk driver is very dangerous. Everybody knows that. Yeah. But so is a drunk backseat driver. <laughs> but he's persuasive. Dude, make a left. Those are trees. That's why I don't, I don't drive know-it-alls around, you know what I mean? <laughs> I hate a drunk know-it-all. That guy's a cartographer? Fuck it, he's going in your car. Dimitri, my unfolding a map. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have I put you in a weird spot that you have to stand behind me for the... No, not at all. <laughs> we'll just do it for a little while and then I'll... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll change it up. I'll find a way to suspend you <laughs> above the two-dimensional Seattle. Oh, that's such a good light fixture right above your head on the wall, painted blue to match the sky. In case you need to plug in something really high up. <laughs> a billion man. <laughs> God, I want to charge my phone, but I would rather it dangle. Precarious electricity. <laughs> All at any minute. Sometimes when you get dressed in the morning, you're really making a decision about your behavior for the day. Like if you put on flip-flops, you're saying, hope I don't get chased today. <laughs> that guy's got running shoes on, be cool. <laughs> Combat boots. Fuck you. <laughs> Swimming is a confusing sport, because sometimes you do it for fun, but then other times you do it to not die. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm filming, I don't know which one it is, you know? I gotta go by the outfit. Pants. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bathing suit. Okay. Naked. We'll see. <laughs> it's kind of like waking up in the morning. Like, you check your outfit and that tells you the status of your situation, you know? If you wake up and you have pajamas on, all right. I planned this, cool. But if you're naked, you gotta check your surroundings to see if it's okay. I'm naked. She's pretty cute. What's he doing here? I'd rather be swimming right now. <laughs> I think drowning would be a horrible experience. But I bet a little less horrible if right before that you're really thirsty. <laughs> Sounds like, man, I could use a drink. Oh, that's good. Whoa, too much. <laughs> That's why if I go out on a boat, I always bring a bag of pretzels. <laughs> I'm like, we're going down? Give me those pretzels, man. I'm going out quenched, goddammit. <laughs> you probably drown slower if you had a snorkel. Because that's like drinking through a straw. <laughs> That sound you hear is me putting the microphone back in the stand. I'm transitioning into another portion of the show. I'm still awkwardly on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leo. <laughs> cool, so sometimes I feel like my jokes need a better ambiance or environment to be presented in. And uh, so I wanted to remake some of my jokes for you guys right now. 
So I'm, I'm going to remix these jokes. This is called the Freak Out Motherfucker Remix. <laughs> or the clean version would be the Freak Out Mother Effer Remix. I'm going to try to play a small keyboard and a glockenspiel at the same time <laughs> while I tell my jokes. And it goes a little something like... <laughs> Excuse me. So, Stuart, you think that's okay, or should I turn the volume down on that thing? Okay, that's a good sign. In the sound industry, shrug means go for it. <laughs>
I hate this product called I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. Sometimes when I'm having toast, I like to be incredulous. How was breakfast? Unbelievable. Fooled again by the spread. Sometimes I mix I Can't Believe It's Not Butter with butter to me. I can believe some of it's butter. I was in a restaurant, and the waitress said, do you want butter on your toast? I said, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> Remix. Thanks, guys. I think that worked. I think it be a word. We'll find out if you can hear me. It might just sound like I'm getting beaten up by a fairy or something like that. Man, Rumble and Magic Land, that guy is rude. I also just drag my harmonica across the floor, um, mouth holes side down. It's like knowing I'm going to kiss a musical hooker. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> I think an eating contest is really just the beginning of a shitting contest. <laughs> yeah, you win now, but in round two, everybody loses. <laughs> Those hot dogs have to go somewhere. <laughs> I think it's weird the way sometimes objects can communicate to you. Like sometimes I look at a donut and it looks like a zero. It's like you're saying, hey, this is how many of me you should eat. <laughs> but then other times I see a bunch of donuts in a row, and it looks like it says, ooh. <laughs> you should eat all of us. <laughs> and then I do, and there's only one left, and it says, oh. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> now did you listen to my friends for? I told you. I can't trust donuts in groups. <laughs> a lot of people don't like bumper stickers. You know, I don't mind bumper stickers, because to me, a bumper sticker is a shortcut. It's like a little sign that says, hey, let's never hang out. <laughs> that goes for your honor student son, too. <laughs> you guys have to understand something. To a comedian, your jokes are like your children. You love all of them the same, even if one of them is retarded. <laughs> Bumper stickers gets to eat at the table too, that's all I'm saying. It's on my list, so I'm doing it. I like digital cameras. Digital cameras enable you to reminisce immediately. It's like, Psh, look at us. We were so young. <laughs> and right there. God, where does that minute go, you know? <laughs> Whenever I meet somebody who has a kid, they have to show me a photo of their kid. But then when I give them a photo of me to show to their kid, <laughs> I'm weird. Come on. There's some kind of one-way street here. Yeah, he's cute. Here, he's cute. Uh, tell him, you know, it's Dimitri and... Uh, I don't know, give me a number, we'll hang out, whatever. <laughs> when somebody shows you a photo of their kid, what they don't want to hear is, oh yeah, I got some photos of your kid too. <laughs> Conversation over. <laughs> Why are there no positive mysteries? It's always like, who stole the diamond? Or who killed the butler? How about, hey, who made cookies? <laughs> Somebody clean my room. <laughs> Hello, detective, I'd like to report the disappearance of a bag of stinky garbage. <laughs> no, I didn't take it out. I'm scared and grateful. <laughs> if I had a bookstore, I'd make the mystery section really hard to find. 
Do you have any mystery novels? That's a good question. Here's all I can tell you. I think it's weird the way sometimes the opposite of a negative is also a negative. Like pickpocketing, that's bad. But I found what's also bad is putting things in people's pockets. So what the hell? I mean, pickpocketing and its opposite, putpocketing, are both bad. It's a lose-lose situation, right? God. I got these new pajamas with uh, pockets in them, which is great because before that, I used to have to hold stuff when I slept. Now I'm like, where's my planner? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Keep sleeping. Okay. <laughs> right on schedule. I'm gonna make night backpacks for when your night pockets are too full. <laughs> God, where am I gonna put all this stuff? Man? <laughs> Some sort of a felt backpack or something. God, I get. I wanna pick up my guitar, but it's like seven feet behind me. I don't wanna have an awkward silence. That helps. Yeah. All right, cool. So now, I hope this is in tune. That's how I feel about the audience. <laughs> boo, boo, that was horrible. I'm gonna edit that out. I'm gonna edit that down. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna be such a perfectionist that I'm gonna edit this thing down. It's just gonna be a single. I'm gonna release a single. <laughs> One joke. One joke with 24 minutes of laughter after that. <laughs> this guy's really good, I think. <laughs> it must be more of that joke. <laughs> I wanted to tell you guys a story here. I wanted to tell a story. I try to open up a little bit and not just have some jokes, but, you know, people ask me sometimes what do you do during the day, what do you do with your time if you're a comedian? And uh, this is an answer to that. Uh, I hook up with chicks. <laughs> Anybody who calls them chicks probably isn't hooking up with them. I, I hook up with ladies. I'm just kidding. No, no, I mean, I'm not kidding. I, I do hook up with ladies. Ah, uh, oh, shit, man. I think that's in tune enough. So, here we go. Well, I just, I wanted to pick just like a typical day and tell you guys some stuff that happens. That's, that's what I'm doing here. So like, I woke up, I live in New York, and I woke up and I just went out for a walk. And uh, I was gonna go to the beach, but it was too far away. So I went to Central Park, which was nice. And there were all these people lying out getting suntans. I like suntans, but I'm more interested in sunburns. Because the sunburn tells a story, you know? Like, hey, that guy likes v-necks. <laughs> and band-aids. I sat in the park for a while. I read a book, cover to cover. It took like two minutes. Because I went around the outside. <laughs> It's funny, you know, I hadn't been to the beach since the summer the synchronized swimming team drowned. It was tragic, but beautiful. <laughs> Apparently the leader got a cramp, and they were pretty hardcore, so... <laughs> Everybody hung out with me. I started to walk into a neighborhood not far from me. Somebody must have lost a dog, because there were pictures everywhere with the dogs picture named and personality trait <laughs> all over it. Five minutes later, I thought I ran into the dog. I said, oh my god, there he is. I said, wait a minute, this poodle is not gregarious. <laughs> Never mind. This one's introspective, run along. <laughs> Owning a dog in New York City is like saying, my need for companionship outweighs my distaste for picking up shit. 
I don't like shit, but I am lonely. I'm gonna get a German Shepherd. And a shovel. but it's, it's not in the right position, so I'm going to drag it discreetly in such a way that does not distract from the rhythm of this song. Perfect. The day before, I had changed the names of all my fish, and they didn't seem to mind. Especially Dead Tony. <laughs> I'm now stomping. I look very impatient to the audience. I ran some errands. It was my friend's birthday and I had to send him a birthday card. But I was mad at him, so I put quotes around the word happy. <laughs> some lunch where I used to eat all the time. Not so much anymore. Not since I went to use their bathroom. I saw a sign that said, employees must wash hands, especially Carl. Because <laughs> he's dirty. That's where when I was 22 I learned that you can get in a lot of trouble for replacing a choking victim poster with a very similar poster that has slight changes. Because <laughs> this woman was choking, and a man got up, gave her a wedgie, and punched her in the face. <laughs> trying to get that sound going. This will sound really cool for the last part here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't get the rhythm. <laughs> I went shopping. I needed to buy a new backpack. So I went into the store, I looked for a half an hour, and I finally found one. Brought it up to the register. The guy said, good choice. That backpack is guaranteed for life. It's a lifetime warranty. And I thought, yes. Then I thought, shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> this damn backpack's still gonna be here. Can I get a pair of scissors too? One of us is going to outlive the other. <laughs> I went out onto the street, but not before going up <clears throat> to the second floor of the store to browse, which is short for look at shit I can't afford. <laughs> I tripped on the escalator. I fell down the stairs for an hour and a half. together, 
on top of a 40-story building. I don't know what happened that day, but he started talking crazy. And he got up on the ledge and he said, I can't take it, man. And he jumped. Just after he jumped, I looked down, and I noticed that Trampoline Emporium was having a sidewalk sale that day. <laughs> Dean landed right on one of the trampolines. He bounced back up 40 stories to where I was standing. And just as he floated up, he said to me, you know, I think a lot of your joke promises are contrived and hard to believe. <laughs> Like 
I went to call my friend. I said, hey, is Chris there? And they said, you have the wrong number. And I said, no, I'm trying to avoid him. <laughs> Uh, I want to try something now. Uh, I want to try something. My friend Will is also here. My friend Will came out here uh, to hang out. We wanted to see parts of the city and stuff. Well, my friend Leo too. So Will, uh, Will, could you come up to the stage? Oh yeah, there he is. Come on up. This is my friend Will, and uh, he's going to help me with something out. He's going to do backup vocals on something. Okay, so uh, the, the cable stuck here. I didn't, I didn't really figure this out. So, Leo, Leo, could you come up for a second? Hold on, don't do anything, don't do anything. I just want to be able to describe what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sorry, I know you were in the back of the room. Sorry about that. Shit, yeah, that step over there is weird. <laughs> could you just describe what's going on in that microphone? Right? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I don't mean to be a prima donna. Okay, first of all, Demetrius, we can bring you back a bit. Everyone's tired enough. Um, he's, he's looping a wire around me right now. Will Forte of TV is on stage drinking water. Uh, now Dimitri is moving his guitar and a, and a chair, and he has a keyboard and a and a, uh, um, a uh, harmonica with a hanger around his neck. <laughs> Kind of like the gay Bob Dylan. Uh, <laughs> oh man, alright. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning something from 20 minutes ago. That, was, that lady proved that she's like, I was here when you said the other thing too. Yeah, I wonder what happened to Cindy. And all those people listening to the scene would be like, what happened to that lady from the beginning of the scene? That girl, that girl who became drunker, what happened to her? Oh, there she is. I want to do, I want to do something more personal here. This is called a personal information waltz. Sometimes when I gotta tell a lie, I just turn 
turned into a fairy tale. Once upon a time, I didn't get your message. And they made out happily ever after.
And my roots are in guitar. I, was a, I started as a street performer, actually. It was pretty hard, because I was in the suburbs. <laughs> On a cul-de-sac. <laughs> Not a lot of foot traffic in there. I, I got good, though. If somebody had to make a U-turn, I'd get them for the whole turn. <laughs> So I developed my semi-circular style. <laughs> I find that whenever I investigate a smell, <laughs> the answer is always bad. <laughs> it's never, what is that? <laughs> Muffins. I have a question. How long is it going to take in our society to see a person with an eye patch and not think that they are a pirate? <laughs> so I saw a guy with a suit and a briefcase, but he had an eye patch. All I could think was, Arr! Talk to me in office, hold me calls. Dude, never buy a parrot. <laughs> I like the hammock. That was a very dynamic bed. Because it's truly weight dependent. You know what I mean? If you're fat and in a hammock, there's a fine line between I'm really relaxed and oh shit. <laughs> Somebody get some scissors and cut me out of this truck. Take away these donuts, goddammit. I'm only meant to have one. I like to do crafts. I work with glitter, primarily. Don't worry, I like tough stuff. Like I make daggers and skulls and shit. The thing about glitter is if you get it on you, be prepared to have it on you forever. Because glitter doesn't go away. It's like the herpes of craft supplies. <laughs> Magical forever. Oh, he's, he's having a flare up because he's in some light. <laughs> it's too bad. I think batteries are the most dramatic object. Most things, they just stop working or they break. But not batteries. Batteries die. <laughs> Hey man, why are you listening to your Walkman? I can't. My battery's dying in my lap this morning. We were so young. It's even worse when you name them. Yeah, the Duracell twins are gone. If you're a battery, you're either working or you're dead. It's a shit life. there are no B batteries, I think that's to avoid confusion. Because if there were B batteries, you wouldn't know when somebody wanted B batteries. We just had a stutter. <laughs> Can I help you? Yes, I would like some B batteries. Sure, what kind? B batteries. Okay, what kind of batteries? Are? I want B batteries, goddammit, I said three times. batteries. That's hard for foreigners. Yes, I would like the batteries over there. I would like to see the batteries, God damn it. I think it would be cool if you were writing a ransom note on your computer if the paper clip popped up and said, it looks like you're writing a ransom note. <laughs> you need some help? We should curse more. <laughs> Sometimes when you learn the meaning of a term, it can be very disappointing. Like when I was a kid, we were going to meet one of my mom's friends, and on the way she described him to me as a cat person. <laughs> I got that and I was like, wait, so you just like cats? <laughs> Dude, that's a cat liker. 
Cat person's a different story. Why does Steven never go in the pool? Oh, he's a cat person. Oh, all right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that's why he's got those hands. The other day I was eating a bowl of cereal. And I had all these questions and comments. Luckily there was a phone number on the box. <laughs> so I called, I said, I have a question. Is this cereal as delicious as I think it is? And I have a comment. Yes. <laughs> saying I apologize is the same as saying I'm sorry. But not at a funeral. Finger 
puppet sounds okay as a noun. <laughs>
Kizzle, stole Will Smith. Awesome. Here comes the man in black. Oh, great song. No, you're tired of that. <laughs> I'm the hit of the party. My friend is saying 20, 21 through the last of the climactic birthdays. The rest are pretty much the same. I beg to differ. I can't wait till I'm 25, because then I can rent a car. Wow! Wow! Ow! <laughs> I'm going like three cars at once. <laughs> They're gonna be like, dude, I rent too many cars. Take me home. See me to puke. Hold my hair. I got a bunch of crappy gifts for my birthday too. The thing I really wanted was a time machine, but uh, they haven't invented it or something. Uh, I was thinking of all the cool things you can do with a time machine. You know, like first thing I would do is buy all the Mossimo clothes from Target. Then time travel back to sixth grade when Mossimo was cool. Yeah. Everyone would be like, damn, Behem, where do you get that fly-ass Mossimo gear? I don't know. I guess I'm just cool like that. Yeah, I got a whole truck full of hyper-color shirts, but they're all for me. No, it's not yours. And pants. I got it all. I got a whole hypercolor suit at home. It's a lure. It's very nice. Well, no. Summertime. I like uh, the reality show season. That's what summer's about. And I pitched my own. It's getting picked up in August. I'm so excited. Uh, it's a lot like The Bachelor. Fifteen women vie for the heart of the perfect man. He's rich. He's funny. He's handsome. But what they don't know is he's abusive. stairs on Fox. It's so great. They get extra points for making up excuses about their bruises, too. Like, what happened to you? I fell down the stairs. Really? Because you also have class of 88 in on your forehead. Oh, there was a class ring at the bottom of the stairs. And whichever woman cooks dinner first is immune to that night's, quote, physical challenge. Sponsored by Jack Daniels. So, that'll be sponsorship. Ah, uh, spousal abuse, always hilarious. <laughs> I went uh, shopping for some jeans at the Gap yesterday, and uh, I don't know, jeans have changed a lot. Like, pre-worn jeans are really in. Which is funny, because you can get actual pre-worn jeans at the thrift store for like $5, but people don't feel comfortable buying pants unless there's techno music in the background. <laughs> they thought you village had like shirtless readers and techno music, they make a lot more money. So in the Valley Village. <laughs> Browse yourself <laughs> while I oil myself. <laughs> Poor policy, sir. Um, as you can see, the faded thigh section pants are really in, which is great, because I used to have, have to get new jeans and then do the worm on gravel for about three weeks to get out of fat. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but now it's come that way. It's awesome. And uh, what else? Sandblasted jeans, that popular, and like pre-shredded jeans. Reasons you used to buy new jeans are like selling points now. It's great, because I can spill food in my pan and just play it all. It's the new style. Like, you got meat sauce on your right pant leg. Uh, ever heard of Sloppy Joe Blasted Jeans? <laughs> They're all the rage in Europe. You'll hear about it in six months. Trust me. Yeah. I was trying on the pants in the dressing room, and I heard this lady say, Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to switch rooms. This is a handicap-only dressing room. I can understand that, you know, but no one was around. I was the only one there. It's not like Stephen Hawking was waiting outside. I need to try on these cargoes. <laughs> so many pockets. <laughs> a man likes his pockets, what can you say? So I switched rooms, and all the pants were way too tight. They were like relaxed fit, loose fit, apparently I was trying on sterile fit. Never had kids again. Cat jeans. It's great. The only reason for me to get pants that tight is if I grew a five o'clock shadow, carried a guitar with me everywhere I go, and did this all the time. Got a pen, big, big, big. Other than that, there's no reason, really. So. I like how I can find a bunch of pants and someone else will fold them. That's awesome. That's what makes America great. Next time I want to accidentally leave behind, finish a load of laundry, just come back when it's done. <laughs> Hopefully they don't catch on. Like, does the Gap sell Star Wars bed sheets? <laughs> you ask too many questions. It looks like this moth flew a little too close to the fly. Ah, fire. Yeah, I watched it. Anyway, <laughs> it's fire. Anyway, um, so it happens in the biz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, I knew that the Nazi resting room bitch lady would be, uh, you know, folding the pants when I tie in a bunch of knots, right? Yeah. And I put a note in the pocket that said, happy folding, whore. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I got banned from the Redmond Gap. Uh, it was worth it. Not after, until I got these bad boys, though, so. Win the situation. So uh, my DSL's been down for about a week. That kind of sucks. It's, uh, still getting used to life with no internet. Like, first 24 hours, like, uh, couldn't stop vomiting. By, by day two, I was offering people hand jobs. Just check my email. It was pretty bad. The office still stands, by the way. I haven't checked it for a long time. Yeah, so uh, I called up Verizon, and uh, four Kenny G songs later, I was connected to Brian. He goes, hello, oh, thank you for calling Verizon soon. How can I help you? Oh, I don't know, Brian. <laughs> Or should I say Sanji? I'm on to you! He goes, sir, I'm definitely American. I said, if you're really American, then you won't break into song and dance when I play this sitar over the phone. And he went, I cannot take it anymore! Yeah, started dancing. I know, because we were using video phones and I could see him. Yeah. He's trying to help me out. He goes like, sir, you're powering down the machine and then powering it back on. I'm like, turning the computer off and on. That's your technical advice to me. What are you going to tell me next? Hit it a few times? He said, I went to the Arthur Fonzarelli School of Troubleshooting. <laughs> My computer's not working. Hey! <laughs> he hops on a motorcycle and drives away. Thanks. He could have fixed it, so, so uh, they're going to send some guy over to my house and take a look at it. My mom wants me to be home, even though she's going to be home too. I was like, why? She goes, well, you'll be fixing the computer, I'll be home alone, I might be taking a shower, and you never know in this day and age. So I've got to stick around just because my mom has seen one too many Lifetime original movies. <laughs> it's pretty awkward. I'm just standing over the guy like, no funny business, Verizon DSL guy. So much for your plans of raping my mom while she's taking a shower. What are you talking about? Oh, you know! I'm watching you. <laughs> Even if someone wanted to do that, it's not like I'm the strongest guy in the world, too. Like, the only difference would be two people get raped instead of one. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. My mom just wants to take me down with her. Thanks. Thanks, mom. If I'm getting raped, you're getting raped, alright? No son of mine is not gonna get raped. Uh, I've been looking for a job lately. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, the comedy gets me crazy paid. Mm, that's right, say go, bitches! It's got three dials, eat it, sir. That's right. My problem is my parents think every job I get is way too dangerous for me. Like, I was this close to becoming a pizza delivery boy, but my mom wouldn't let me because she seriously thought someone would order a pizza for, like, an abandoned warehouse. And I'd show up like, well, that's odd. <laughs> Better go inside to investigate. Hello, hello, hello! Round table, I have lots of money on me, on me, on me! The garage door would open up, ten escape convicts would come out with chains, lead pipes, and other various ass opening equipment. Like, you picked the wrong place to deliver to, but That doesn't happen to normal people, and even if it did, I'd be able to handle it, because I've been taught from an early age, if ever I should find myself in an abandoned warehouse with ten escape convicts who want to kill me, all I have to do is this. Just beat it, beat it, beat it, spin it, spin it, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, exactly. They all want to dance instead of hit my ass. That's why I carry a glittery glove with me at all times, just in case. Like, I'm surrounded. Uh, oh, we're expecting that. Who's bad? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to take all the time on Microsoft. That's right. I need to sleep. I need to love anything else. But I had a job interview uh, a couple days ago, and the, the questions are so easy. Why even have the interview? It's like, define customer service for me. Ooh, I know this one. Uh, she just spent all my time going over my teamwork flashcards. Um, customer service is when your friend's passed out and you're dangling your nuts on his face. Oh, you see that? Ah. I just do myself all the time. When do I start? I never, never person, but, uh, I like doing comedy, and I just know one of these days I'm going to blow up. Not literally, don't worry. Um, just because, you know, all the support I get from home with my dad, just uh, these words of encouragement, yeah, it's so funny. One of his phrases, how does it go? It goes, uh, 
You keep up this comedy bullshit and you let him gutter in 10 years. Yeah, uh, makes me feel all warm and tingly inside. Mm. Just, uh, both my parents were born over in Afghanistan, and uh, so me doing comedy is like the American equivalent of finding out your son does gay porn. <laughs> I was born here in America, so that's why I'd rather watch Axis Hollywood and find out what's going on in the world. Like, uh, 12 dying embassy bombing, boring! What's going on with Lindsay Lohan? That's what I want to know. Or she has new beret. And, uh, <laughs> and so it gets confusing for me sometimes. Sometimes I forget I'm Afghan. Like the other day, I saw some Middle Eastern guy crossing the street, and I was like, Why are you going back to where you came from? Saying nigga! Oh, wait a second! See dinner tonight, Dad. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll do it next while, guys. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to next performer. Very, very funny man. He's a writer for SNL. That's on Saturday, so in case you didn't catch that. And uh, he's also, uh, he's been on Conan very, very many times. So please go warm welcome for Leo Allen. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ernie. And thanks for lending me your jacket. Um, <laughs> that sucks when you're the second person who goes somewhere wearing the same thing. It's like, look at that jerk. <laughs> but that's okay, because I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> oh, look, this is, the, this is the microphone for the intro. Uh, we, we, were, uh, we were in Austin yesterday, and uh, I'm very excited to be in Seattle. I like Seattle. It's one of my favorite cities. Austin, also cool, but hot. Really hot. I mean, it was like 105 degrees, and it made me think of, because uh, in, in New York, it's really hot, too, but New York has had disgusting, uh, uh, like, 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 humid, hot, and the smell of the city, it, it's awful. And uh, I got AC, finally, for the first time ever, but the AC beginning, it's horrible. It sucks. And uh, so this is what this is what it's like when my when my AC is on low. What it feels like it feels like there's a guy in my apartment talking about air conditioning. <laughs>